The next subject is uh, a new one of these seminars, but a very interesting one. It's about generations. You may have noticed that there are different generations in your lodges. And uh, the mindset of the different generations is so interesting. Uh, for example, we do trivia at our lodge. Uh, we have trivia night once a week. And uh, occasionally we ask the uh, younger members of the lodge to be trivia masters. They're in their early 20s. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know? And then we, when the older members of the lodge do trivia, it's completely beyond the younger members. So, different mindset, different generations. And so now it's my pleasure to introduce the next topic, which is communication between generations in your lodge. And to present this topic, uh, is not only Michael Greensider, but his wife, Linnea, Linnea Redenberg. They're from the Mountain View Lodge. They're both past grands, past district deputy grandmasters, and they have something to tell you about generations and communications. So Michael and Linnea. So I'm Michael Greensiger, and this is real close. I'm Michael Greensiger, and this is Linnea Redberg, and we're here to talk about communication between generations. And this, of course, is a really and this, of course, is a really important topic right now because within our lodges we do have people from many different generations, and it's really important that we all be able to work together for the best of the lodge. But before we get into it, um, Linnea is going to give us a quick quote. Times are terrible. Children don't obey their parents, and everyone's writing a book. It could have been said about today. Everyone certainly is writing a book, even if it is tweet by tweet and Facebook post by Facebook post. But this wasn't said any time recently. It was said over 2,000 years ago by Cicero during the ancient Roman Empire. Um, it just goes to show you that if you're feeling frustrated, with the younger generations, or if you feel like the older generations are frustrated with you, that's been literally going on forever. <laughs> so we're going to, um, during this presentation, hopefully we'll be able to clarify some of that. So let's start off here with how we define generations. Um, and one important thing I want to say about this is that uh, although this is based on the research of sociologists and there are certain general trends they've observed from people of the different generations. Uh, nevertheless, like this is only like a rough guide, and just because you fall into a particular generation doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be exactly like it. Maybe you identify a little bit more with like the generation before, the generation after. These are just general trends that sociologists have observed. Uh, so actually, I'd like to start out uh, by identifying what generations we have in the room here. Uh, could I have everybody raise their hands who was born between 1928 and 1945? Okay. This, this, is, this is the silent generation. Next, could we have everybody born between 1946 and 1964? Okay, this is, this is the baby boomers. You can see we have quite a lot of them here. Uh, now, born between 1965 and 1980. This is Generation X. 1981 to 1998. These are the Millennials. And finally, 1999 to 2015. Do we have anyone here? Okay. That, that is Generation Z, and thank you for being here. Uh, so as you can see from the chart on the right, uh, the distribution of the generations in the United States today is a little bit different than what we have in the room here. The millennials are actually the biggest generation right now, followed closely by the baby boomers, followed by Gen X and then Gen Z. So it's really important that we make an effort to bring people in from these generations, since that's who's out there in the public today waiting to learn about our order. First, let's talk about the silent generation. Those of you who were born between 1928 and 1945. 
A lot of you were born during the Great Depression or World War II. Many of you remember growing up expecting a difficult life and having these resources be a little scarce. Your generation is called silent because unlike generations that followed, you did not protest the war that happened in your lifetime. And indeed, it's very difficult to argue in World War II. Another characteristic of this generation is that they hate waste and value thrift. So if you can fix something rather than throwing it out and getting a new one, probably a good idea to do that. Okay. Next we have baby boomers. This is the generation born between 1946 and 1964, currently aged 53 to 71. The reason they're called the baby boomers was due to the huge increase in population that occurred following World War II. And this generation grew up during a time of widespread prosperity for the United States. This is sort of the, the stereotype of like the, the house, two cars, 1.5 kids, a dog, a white picket fence. That's the childhood that much of this generation had. But as they grew older, they got involved with anti-war protests and the civil rights movement. And this is also the first generation to really be impacted by television, because at the time they grew up, by that time, most families had a television in their home. Next, let's talk about Gen X, which is my generation, our generation. So the birth rate was smaller than the previous generation, so Gen X was a bit smaller than the baby boomers. We were the last generation to grow up without the internet. We had this thing called a backyard, and we actually went out and played in it. And sometimes we would even go independently to go and play someplace called a playground. I know that the younger generations also knew that, but I think that it was much more prevalent. There, was, there were no computer games or social media to speak of. We are, according to sociologists, self-reliant and intensely cynical. We're especially a little bit skeptical of authority figures. We are, however, despite that, much more traditional than our boomer parents. Now for the millennials, which is probably one of the most maligned generations in the, the media today, which I think is a little bit unfair. Uh, they were born between 1981 and 1998 and are presently aged 19 through 36. Unlike earlier generations, almost everybody in the millennial generation grew up with a computer and the internet in their home. And this, this had a major impact on, on the way they think about the world. This had a major impact on the way they think about the world. They immediately have access to all kinds of information, connections between people without having to leave their homes. So this was obviously a major formative impact on that generation. In addition to that, though, they also experienced the largest economic decline since the Great Depression at a major time when they were all beginning to enter the workforce. And so this, this is also something that significantly impacted this generation and, and in a certain way made it like earlier generations that lived through the Great Depression. Housing prices have made living independently increasingly difficult for the millennial generation and as a result of this, uh, many people in this generation still live with their parents or are having trouble forming their own households. Because of these economic conditions that they grew up in, like some earlier generations, they value thrift and they're interested in something called upcycling. For those who have not heard this term, upcycling refers to taking an object that's no longer useful and finding a new purpose for it. This is a very thrifty thing you could do, obviously and avoids waste. So this is a way in which millennials are like earlier generations. Uh, but one thing that's a little bit new is that millennials are very language conscious. The way, you, the way you describe and talk about things to them and what terminology you use is, is very important to this generation. They, they may be a little bit less like tolerant of, of say, like racial or, or any kind of jokes that like might not be offensive to earlier generations that this generation is typically more sensitive to. Speaking of language, it's a good transition. Let's talk a little bit about communication differences. I think Ernie t touched on this earlier, that the silent generation and the boomers still typically prefer phone or mail, the actual paper mail that you stuff inside an envelope and put a stamp on. 
In communication styles, um, these two generations often favor formality and precision in communication. They like nice flowery sentences that are uh, long and sound professional. They like to deal with their business face to face. And they like to talk about what they do for a living, what they're doing at work, and their experience, what they have to offer that they bring to the table. Gen X and millennials are a little bit different. They typically prefer email or texting. They often favor efficiency and time savings in communication. And a lot of um, older generations tend to view this as being disrespectful. But from the perspective of a Gen X or a millennial, brevity is the soul of wit. And making a sentence longer than it has to be is, act is actively wasting the time of the reader. So believe it or not, by making their sentences shorter, they're trying to be respectful of your time. They like to deal with their business asynchronously. And again, this has a lot to do with multitasking culture. I can cook my dinner and between stirring things on the stove, go and check my text messages. But I can't cook my dinner while I'm on the phone. And when we call people, we often worry that we're interrupting them with our phone call or that we might be bothering them. We will make small talk, but it's generally about our personal interests, hobbies, and home life, and not so much about our work or experience. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how generations view authority. And I think probably most of us in the room don't like being told what to do generally. But uh, nevertheless, there are differences in the way different generations perceive authority. The silent generation, they typically are more used to a rigid command structure. They like knowing who's in charge. That's really important to getting things done within that generation. Now, baby boomers, on the other hand, also value authority. But unlike the silent generation, they're a little bit more willing to question the authority figures. And they're very much interested in working collaboratively. Uh, Gen X, our generation, we're, we're pretty skeptical about authority. And even when we ourselves are in a position of power, we expect to be challenged by the people whom we are leading. Because that's just the way we view authority. It's that you should always be prepared to answer questions for the people that are working for you. Uh, now, millennials, on the other hand, they're often actually willing to abandon uh, authority entirely. If, if, they're, if they're working on a team for you, and they don't like the decisions that you're making, rather than even challenging you, what they will often do is actually just go off and do something else if, if they don't like your leadership style. They're very much more willing to go it alone. And so that's something to bear in mind when you're dealing with uh, millennials in an authority type situation. So now let's get down to the meetings. I think we lost Stuart with the clicker. There you go. So, when running meetings, the different generations actually have different expectations and different preferences as to how that meeting is run. The silent generation, they seem to like lengthy formal meetings, minutes, and correspondences. Baby boomers typically dislike meetings altogether, but they enjoy social gatherings. I hear some laughter, I think that might be true of some of the people in this room. <laughs> Gen X likes tradition and history and rituals, but time-consuming minutes and correspondences drive us a little crazy. Millennials are likely to tune out during anything they don't consider relevant to them. This could include the minutes, the correspondences, if you guys are spending 15 minutes talking about an air conditioning unit that they don't particularly know anything about, um, you might find them texting on their phones or playing a game on their tablet because this generation doesn't consider it rude to multitask. So these preferences extend beyond just the meetings themselves and into other lodge activities. Now, often um, some of the earlier generations, like the silent generation, they consider lodge meetings an end unto themselves. They're often happy just to get out of the house, see their friends at the lodge meeting, and have that regular structure in their lives. They also tend to seem to enjoy potluck dinners. <laughs> baby, baby boomers, they, they're very much into lodge social events, such as dinners and parties. 
and often it's their preference that at large social events that alcohol be served. And I think that lie tends to liven up a, a, a large social event as well. So, Generation X and Millennials, uh, they actually don't see the Lodge as much as an end unto itself. They see it more as a platform that they can use to accomplish specific aims. Uh, they, since their primary social outlets are online, and they get much of their, their social interaction online, they actually don't need to do this in person as much. And so when they do do events, they often prefer events that are tailored to their specific individual interests. And that could include their hobbies. We've seen a lot of lodges where the younger members are united by a specific hobby that they're all interested. It could also be service events. They could have certain ways that they want to serve their community or certain causes they want to support. Uh, this, is, this is a big thing that Generation X and Millennials like to do in their lodges. Yeah, yeah, usually the younger gen with, with uh, millennials, we tend to see them do events without alcohol. They're much more contented with tea, has been my observation, but that could just be, so see, that's just my personal observation. You wouldn't know what's in the tea, though. I suppose I know. All right, so now let's get down to brass tacks. Um, we need to do more than accommodate the members from different generations that happen to show up in our lodges. We need to be able to articulate the benefits of Odd Fellowship to sell people from these different generations on the value of Odd Fellowship. For the silent generation, and you'll often hear when you ask somebody from this generation, why did you join the lodge? And the answer usually sounds something like, the lodge is a great bunch of guys and gals. They, they choose a lodge based on the people that they're spending time with. The boomers, you might try a sales pitch such as, Want to come join our clubhouse? We have a refrigerator full of beer. <laughs> Works pretty well for Gen Xers too, speaking from personal experience. Gen X, um, our group has great history and initiations. That is something you can actually say to someone who is from Gen X and they'll get really excited. Ooh, it's historical, yay! Millennials, on the other hand, tend to be um, very much entrepreneurial, and they tend to be very independent. And so, saying, well, we can help you accomplish your project, whatever it is, whether that's a community service project or a social project. Because, you know, sorry, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Okay. Um, so, uh, before we close on this topic, um, I just want to talk a little bit about Generation Z. Generation Z is the generation we haven't talked about yet. It's the new generation that's uh, just becoming adults and entering the workforce now. They're presently ages uh, 2 to 18 or 19. And although they haven't really entered the workforce yet, and not as much is known about them, sociologists do have some views on how this generation is going to turn out. Um, they're thought to be more tolerant of others than previous generations, including uh, differences based on race, culture, and sexual orientation. Uh, this generation is currently perceived to be more cautious and less likely to take risks than some of the previous generations. Uh, it's thought that they're going to value hard work, but uh, since this generation, more than any of the other previous ones, lived so much of their lives online, it's thought that they're more likely to feel lonely or isolated than previous generations. So, maybe this is an opportunity for us as Oddfellows. Maybe we can welcome this generation into our lodges by making an effort to understand them and be tolerant of them. And that's what we should be doing with all the generations, because as I said at the beginning, even if the, the description of your generation doesn't exactly fit you, we can use this to recognize that we all have differences, and there's a place for all types of different people in our lodges. And we need to make an effort to communicate with each other and to understand the preferences of all the different types of people in our lodge, so that our lodge can serve all of us and I, I believe that this will make us very successful as all fellows. Thank you.